In this video, we're going to take a look at the binomial and extended binomial theorem. It's our last readiness video before we actually start to deal with generating functions. We have worked with the binomial theorem in the past. And just as a reminder, when we have one plus x to the n, that tells us that we're going to take the summation as k goes from zero to n of n choose k and then x to the k. Now, this one's an easier example because this value is 1, but let's just take a look at what that would do. We can rewrite 1 plus x to the fourth as the summation as k goes from 0 to 4. Again, this is an upper bound of 4. And then we're going to use that value of 4 as 4 choose k in our expression and then x to the k. So for this particular example, we start with k is 0, so that's 4 choose 0, x to the 0. And then we go on to 1, 4 choose 1, x to the 1, 4 choose 2, x squared, 4 choose 3, x cubed, 4 choose 4, x to the 4th. So that's fantastic and probably something that you are very comfortable with because we've done it a lot. Now, if you'll recall that n choose k is going to equal 0 if k is greater than n, that means I can actually write this as an infinite sum because all of the values here are going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's going to be important as well. So instead of writing an upper bound of n, we're writing an upper bound of infinity, and that's going to make it much easier for us. I do want to point out that in my last example, I used 1 plus x, but keep in mind that x and y can be a constant like we used in our last example, one plus x. They can be variables um, or variables that include coefficients. So I did wanna do one more example where I did use coefficient with a variable and a constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the solution for x to the fourth of three x plus two to the ninth power. So again, I'm just going to use the binomial theorem that says x in this case is 3x, y is 2, and n is 9. And because I'm solving for what is the coefficient of x to the fourth, that means k is 4. So using this binomial theorem, it says take the sum, not the summation, because I only care about the 4. So I'm going to take 9 choose 4, 9 being n, 4 being the value that I care about in this instance. And then my first value is 3x, so not x, but 3x, and that's to the kth power, so that in, in this case that's 4. And then we have the other variable, or constant, in this case that's 2, and then to the 9 minus 4, or fifth power. From here, I can just utilize my calculator. This is 126. 3 to the 4th is 81. x to the 4th is obviously x to the 4th, and then 2 to the 5th is 32. So the actual term is, by multiplying with my calculator, 326,592x to the fourth. Keep in mind, however, I'm only looking for the coefficient. So the coefficient, or my solution, is 326,592. I feel fairly confident that you've used the binomial theorem in the past. However, you may not have used the extended binomial theorem. So let's take a look at what that means. We know that we can write n choose k as n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial. What we don't know, possibly, is that we can do some manipulation of this. In the numerator, we have n factorial. Well, that's just the same as n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, and continuing on to n minus k plus 2, n minus k plus 1, n minus k, n minus k minus 1, and so on. But I'm going to stop at n minus k and say, okay, n minus k factorial. So really what I did was just write out some of the values beforehand. It's the same as if I said 10 factorial is the same as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. That's exactly the same thing. So why am I going to do that? Because in the denominator, I have k factorial and then n minus k factorial. 
Well, I can take n minus k factorial and n minus k factorial and cancel it out. So that means n choose k can now be rewritten as n times n minus 1 dot dot dot, so all the stuff in the middle, times n minus k plus 2 times n minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial. So you might be thinking, well, that's pretty dumb. Why does it matter? Well, it does matter, in fact, because in the original binomial theorem, n has to be a positive whole number value. In the extended binomial theorem, n can be a fraction or even a negative number. So let's take a look. So let's take a look at the extended binomial theorem with a fraction. And as we can see in this case, n is 5 thirds and k is 3. Uh, sorry, I wrote 3 equals 3, so 3 is k. Now what I want to do before I start writing my fraction is I want to know at what point am I going to stop. So I'm going to take n minus, I'm going to take n and then n minus 1 and n minus 2 and I'm going to keep going until I get n minus k plus 1. So n minus k is 3, so 3 plus 1 means that I'm going to take n minus 2. So n minus 2 is going to be my last one. So really that means I'm going to have three terms. So what does that look like over here? I've got 5 thirds choose 3. Whoops, not a fraction. 5 thirds choose 3. n is 5 thirds. n minus 1 is 5 thirds minus 3 thirds or 2 thirds. And n minus 2 is 5 thirds minus 6 thirds, or negative 1 third. My denominator is k factorial. k is 3, so that's 3 factorial. Then I'm just going to multiply things out. So this is just algebra, or really just computation. 5 thirds times 2 thirds times negative 1 third is negative 10 27ths, divided by 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So that gives me negative 10 divided by 27 times 6, or 162, which gives me a final result of negative 5 over 81, because we always reduce our fractions. Well, let's take a look at what happens when n is negative. So really, we're just going to look at the math. We're going to replace n with negative n, which gives me negative n, negative n minus 1, negative n minus 2, and so on, to negative n minus k plus 1, divided by k factorial. And I want to factor a negative 1 out of everything in the numerator. So I'm going to take a negative 1 out k times, and that's going to turn n, negative n into positive n, and negative n minus 1 into n plus 1, and negative n minus 2 into n plus 2, and so on all the way to positive n plus k minus 1 divided by k factorial. Now this whole section of stuff right here is essentially what's left over when I use a normal model to, not normal in, in statistics, but essentially all of that can be rewritten as n plus k minus 1 over, I'm sorry, factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to keep the negative 1 to the k, I'm going to keep the k factorial, and then I'm going to replace everything I've boxed out in green with this identity. So that leaves me with n plus k minus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. Well, guess what? That is the same as negative 1 to the k, so let's just get rid of that. And then everything that's left over gives me n plus k minus 1 factorial over k factorial n minus 1 factorial. And perhaps you remember and perhaps you don't, but this is the combinations with repetition model, which means, lucky for us, 
this solution is negative 1 to the k and then n minus I'm sorry n plus k minus 1 choose k so this is what we're going to use when we have negatives in our extended binomial theorem so how can I compute negative 6 choose 3 negative 6 choose 3 says I'm going to take 6 plus 3 minus 1 so 6 plus 3 minus 1 is 8 and then choose 3 so remember sometimes we wrote that double bracket around the 6 and 3 it's up to you if you do that but this gives me 8 choose 3 but it also gives me negative 1 to the k so that's negative 1 to the third power well negative 1 to the third is obviously negative 1 so my final solution is negative and then 8 choose 3 you might be wondering at this point what are we doing why do we need to do this well it's going to come into focus hopefully right here I'm trying to solve again this is all leading up to generating functions so how am I going to solve for the coefficient for x to the fifth of 1 over 1 minus x quantity to the third well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my generating function as 1 minus x to the negative third power that's going to make it a little bit more clear that n is going to be negative 3 and that k is going to be 5 so we're dealing with k of 5 so how is that helpful well let's go ahead and use our extended binomial theorem so if I'm choosing or n choose k n is negative 3 k is 5 so I have negative 3 choose 5 and then I'm going to have what is the value of this that's negative x to the fifth so again that's just using the regular binomial theorem and then including the part where we talk about the negative exponent so I'm going to actually write negative x to the fifth in another color to hopefully help us keep things straight now negative 3 to the fifth says that I'm going to rewrite negative 3 to the fifth as 3 plus 5 minus 1 or 7 choose 5 but then negative 1 to the kth power which in this case is 5 I'm also going to rewrite x negative x to the fifth as negative 1 to the fifth and x to the fifth now the reason I wrote them in a different color is just so that you could understand that I really don't care about the x to the fifth that's just telling me that that's going to be whatever the coefficient is in front of x to the fifth but I do end up with negative 1 to the fifth twice well negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1 and negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1 but when I multiply negative 1 times negative 1 I actually get positive 1 so my final solution here is just 7 to the fifth and again I can always multiply that out 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial 2 factorial which gives me 42 over 2 or 21 typically I'm going to be satisfied with the 7 choose 5 solution hopefully you have stuck with me through all of the readiness for generating functions because now we actually get to look at how to solve counting problems with generating functions